It's been said that every quilt tells a story, and it's so true. But I also believe every quilter has a story to tell. I wanted to hear about the people behind these wonderful quilts and thought you'd enjoy hearing about their lives also. Welcome to A Quilter's Life. The quilt shop, Just So, in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, is run by three generations of incredible ladies. On this episode, I get to visit with April Pryor to hear her story, and then a little about working with her mother and daughter. I came across a Facebook post from one of their customers, which describes how great these ladies are. It read, FYI, had a little issue with a mail order. Just so went out of their way to solve my problem to the point of driving to my house. Just want to tell you, this is a first class store with first class owners. Want to thank them and recommend them to everyone. So glad to have April with us today. Thank you for being on A Quilter's Life, April. Thank you so much for having me. That's good to have you here. Let's start with your background. Please tell me where you were born and raised. Sure. I was born in Dayton, Ohio, and lived in Beaver Creek for the first maybe five years of my life. And then we moved back home to where my parents grew up and my grandparents grew up in Hilliard, Ohio, which is a small farm town to the west of Columbus. Well, it used to be. It's not anymore. Oh, neat. Yeah. Lived there until I got married. Oh, I'm going to throw this in because I did hear it on another podcast where your husband was interviewed. He said he met you in Jerusalem. How did you get over there? (laughs) Yes, that's true. We were both doing a semester abroad at a school called Jerusalem University College. So he's from Seattle. I'm from Hilliard, Ohio. And God took us to Jerusalem to introduce us to each other. (laughs) How neat. Yeah. I probably jumped way far up with that. I should go back. Do you have a favorite childhood memory? Hmm. Wow. I had what I would say is kind of like an idyllic childhood, I guess, or maybe like a typical Midwestern. Grew up out in the country. My grandfather was a dairy farmer. The view out of my front window was cornfields as far as the eye can see. So I think it's not a specific memory. It's just kind of a general way of life of quiet and the entertainment was my siblings. (laughs) So we were pretty close as kids and we would play outside all the time. I was barefoot all the time and we would grow food in our garden and eat the tomatoes straight off the plant like they were apples and swing and swing and swing on our swing set and play make-believe games and climb trees and things like that. So that's definitely a big part of my, the way when I think of my childhood, it's mostly us playing outside and mom calling us in for a snack and things like that. Oh, fun. Yeah. It is such a blessing to be able to run out on a farm. Yes. I was kind of into gymnastics too. So I love just being able to like do cartwheels and flip around and do stuff all over the grass and just run and all that fun stuff. Neat. Yeah. How long were you over in Jerusalem? At that time, I was just there for a semester. So like August to December of 1997. Okay. We've been back many times since, but that time was just a semester. Neat. Career-wise, did you have a career, you say at home mom, which is a career or? Yes, I did choose the career of motherhood. That started for me in 1999 when our first child was born. That's our Mm -hmm. daughter, Kelsey, and she is 21 now. So 21 years (laughs) (laughs) We started our quilt shop two years ago. So up until that point, I was mostly just at home with my kids. We did different types of creative ideas for their education. 
I was very involved in overseeing all of that. We have five children within nine years. The oldest and the youngest are nine years apart. Uh One boy and four girls, as you can imagine, kept me very busy learning how to run a household, learning how to play hostess and (laughs) what that means. And yeah. Besides quilting, what other crafts do you do? Yeah, I've done crocheting, all different kinds of sewing. Growing up, I did a lot of garment sewing. I was in 4-H and did different projects for 4-H. And then I would just make my own clothes a lot in high school and things like that. Never too much on the designing side. I definitely needed a pattern, but I loved to just crank out a new skirt for school next week (laughs) or whatever (laughs) needed to happen. Yeah. Cross stitching. I've crocheted several blankets in the last few years. I kind of go in waves. I was very into making oilcloth bags for a while. So I made each of my kids an oilcloth bag. Can you explain that one to me a little bit? I don't think I've heard of that. Okay. So oilcloth, at least the kind of oilcloth I was using, there might be other kinds, I don't know, but it comes on a really long roll, maybe like a 60 inch roll. It feels like kind of plasticky, but it has a fun print on it. My mom says her grandmother used to use oilcloth as like her tablecloth because it's, you can wipe it down. Yeah. Yeah. The underside is kind of like a canvasy and then the top is like really slick. Okay. So it's like gingham or like cherries or different prints. Okay. That they'll have on the other side. Yeah. So then I used that with just some webbing with straps and made some fun applique designs on the outside for them. That was really fun. But then I haven't done it since. (laughs) But I did card making for a long time. My sister and my mom are really into stamping up the like card making company. So I would get card stock and stamps from them and, and make cards for people, stuff like that. I did macrame with my mom when we were little. I haven't done that in my adult years, but I'm not very artistic in terms of like drawing or painting or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably about it. Any hobbies? Uh, I think this might sound very strange, but one of my favorite hobbies, I don't get to spend much time doing it, but I really like to learn languages. So I have a degree in sign language interpreting from back in the day. And I started studying Hebrew just kind of for the fun of it. Yeah. Um, about maybe 10 years ago, you know, I started back when my husband and I met in Israel, we were one of the classes I took was a very beginning modern Hebrew class. So I've studied modern Hebrew off and on over the last few years. And then I took some biblical Hebrew for two years. So I really enjoyed that. That's Somehow, the way God made my brain, I just really enjoy languages. That's cool. So, yeah. Who introduced you to quilting? I would say it was probably my grandmother and my aunts and my mom, kind of all in the context of working together. They quilted to some degree, my mom and her sisters and my grandmother. And they had this idea to make all the grandkids a graduation quilt at the time of their graduation. So I feel like for years we were working on the the quilt squares for the next person who was going to graduate. There was eight grandkids on that side of the family. And so they would design, like everyone would design a quilt square for the person that was the graduate. And then my mom and aunts and grandmother all worked together to put the squares together. And then my mom and grandmother and my aunts all made these little characters to go along the border. Have you ever heard of, they're called Adam members? Uh Uh-uh. Okay. I haven't heard them in any other context, um, even until now. They're little, just like little people, basically like appliqued with embroidered features on their face and just different clothing and then cuffs around the wrists and things like that with embroidery. And they're like, this one's grandfather and this one's grandmother. And then this one's aunt Joyce and this one's uncle Dave. And then this one's cousin Billy, you know? (laughs) And so 
everyone's quilt has the whole entire family in a little character around the outside of the quilt. So it's pretty neat. Wow. Yeah. Do you remember making your first quilt? Yes, I do. I think the first one I made like by myself was my grandmother. She hired me. (laughs) I think she wanted it done. And then she was also looking for a way to like for me to earn money. Mm -hmm. So she kind of combined the two. I made a log cabin quilt with a fabric that she had purchased and it was all kind of blues and greens, purples, the cool colors. So I made that for her and then she had it long armed, which was pretty new back then. I think, I think it was pretty new back then. I had never heard of it before because we had done mostly everything by hand up until that point. Uh So I was really surprised that she was going to do that because it kind of felt like cheating. (laughs) 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 So I was probably in high school, late high school, maybe early college Uh when I did that. Yeah. How neat. So describe your favorite quilt or quilt pattern. Hands down, it's a grandmother's flower garden, the hexagon. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I just, I don't know why, but every time I see it in all the different variations, I'm so drawn to that. Actually, I do think I know where I first, first saw one. It was in our neighbor's house when I lived in Dayton. So that tells you I was either five or younger when I saw this quilt. Oh, neat. Uh, it made such an impression on me. I remember all the hexagons fitting together, how they all had yellow centers, and then each flower was a different color. And seeing the stitches, I'm assuming it was probably done by hand, and getting to kind of push on it because it was kind of puffy. <laughs> I remember that as a kid. So I think that's where I first got introduced to Grandmother's Flower Garden. And I just really enjoy that. And that's actually the logo for our shop oh, yeah. is a Grandmother's Flower Garden. Oh, so, neat. yeah. So tell me about your favorite tool. My favorite tool. Hmm. I would say it's the combination of having just the right ruler when you're doing something small. Like I like the ruler that's, uh, I see, I seem to use this one a lot. It's like, I think two and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. So it's kind of like a long skinny one, but it's not the full width of fabric. It's like when you're doing a smaller cut and the combination of that with a rotating cutting mat. So when you're cutting and then you can turn it and then cut again, if it's a project where you need to like trim or when you're chewing your squares, that kind of thing. I really love the rotating cutting mat and my, uh, that two and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler. Wow. I also like my one by six ruler, that little tiny guy. That's how I can draw like the diagonal lines on the back of squares when I'm doing like stitch and flip type Uh quilting. Yeah. So I like that ruler because when you're working with something small. Yeah. When you're making a quilt, what's your favorite part of the process or do you like it all? (laughs) I am definitely a piecer. (laughs) I almost feel like I'm being dishonest if I say I'm a quilter. (laughs) Uh, I have hand quilted two small quilts. Again, Grandmother's Flower Gardens, when those are my first hand ones that I did. Other than that, I just have a bunch of tops sitting in bins, you know, waiting for the right moment Mm -hmm. where I'll, (laughs) I don't know what I think is going to happen. The quilting fairy will show up and magically quilt all my quilts. I'm not (laughs) sure, but, (laughs) but I do enjoy piecing a lot for sure. And I don't mind binding. I like that part. Uh huh. I do the kind where you stitch it on with a machine first and then flip it over and do the rest by hand on the other yeah. side. Mm-hmm. So I like having a hand project like that. Yeah. Like I said, I just took the one class and my m- mind's going, isn't that the only way to do it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. Well, I know some people machine bind yeah. and I cannot get mine to line up and look right. So I just keep doing the hand. Yeah. The hand kind. Yeah. When I took that class, I have I've said this before in other episodes, but 
I told the teacher, this is the only time I'm ever going to hand sew this. I'm going to be sewing them by machine. Well, when I finished it and saw how nice it looked, uh -huh. I, I, I've never done another one completely okay. by machine. I've done it the way you explained. Yeah. Okay. So never say never. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh. Tell me about your worst quilting experience. I didn't quilt much or doing much sewing when my kids were, it was probably like a 10 year time period where I didn't do much because it was really hard to get a project out and then mm -hmm. have little fingers around and then have a place where I could put it out of their way. I would end up having to put it all away and then just be like, forget it. I'm not getting it back out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was during that season. I tried to dive in a little bit and I was trying to do just a wall hanging of see here, what is it called when it's a bunch of diamonds sewn together and kind of like a star shape? Is that a Texas star maybe or something? I'm, I'm not exactly sure on the. Okay. I don't know if there's a technical name, but um, lots of little diamonds. And I didn't understand. They were all cut on the bias or something. So I put all this work into certain, like maybe having like four strips of these little diamonds hand sewn together because I ended up doing it by hand. And they were so off that I couldn't match any of them up. And I was so frustrated because I was trying to be crafty and within motherhood and look, it can be done. And it wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> so I just remember being really frustrated about that because I thought it would look really cool yeah. if I could make it work. So I don't know if I threw it away or if it's buried somewhere in a box. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Why do you make quilts rather than do another craft? I would say at this point in my life, it is mostly because of being a shop owner. I don't know if I would make as many quilts as I do not being a shop owner. Everything from the expense side of things to the deadlines. Like the deadlines are very nice to have for me to say, oh, I really want to get this sample made or I really want to get this done so that we can show this next class that we're teaching, we don't teach classes currently, but we used to. Mm -hmm. So my mom and I would work together on getting samples made and the thrill of having to sew something, <laughs> having to quilt to get something done for a deadline is very exciting to me, I guess. And that works. But I think that that's mostly why I'm choosing quilting. I learned recently from a friend who's going through a really hard time. She had gone to some counseling and they were encouraging her to do something creative because they were saying that when you've been through some type of trauma, that oftentimes doing a creative project helps heal you, even just your actual brain. Then, of course, it also comes through in your emotions and things like that. And I thought, how wonderful is that of our creator to put that in us, something where when we go through things in life, we have this ability with our tactile fingers, it's very physical, to touch the fabric or to pick out colors or to match up the seams or the feeling when your corners go together so nicely and the ability to kind of work with it until it does. And I've just learned so many different lessons about my own heart and other people, what they might be going through, through doing silly things like that. Like when you have to spend your time taking something out because, you know, maybe I wasn't paying attention or I just zoned out and read the directions wrong or something like that. Just different things in life. I feel like God can really speak to me through quilting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's neat. So I'm going to say besides quilting for things for your shop, who would you make quilts for? I would make quilts for my nieces and nephews. I have done that for a few of them. I have lots of them. So <laughs> <laughs> um, it would take me a while to make one for all of them. So I would, for them, for, I don't have any grandchildren yet, but I would love to make 
quilts for my grandchildren. I have a sister who has four grandchildren and she already has probably 10 or 11 quilts stacked up and just ready for when (laughs) for when her more grandkids come along because she has nine children so I think she's expecting to probably have at least nine grandchildren you know (laughs) so I'm not there yet I don't have like a backlog of quilts (laughs) but um I would quilt for them I would quilt for my mom my in-laws my mother and Mm father-in-law I haven't ever done a charity quilt before or a quilt to give to someone who's, you know, going through something hard. I think that would be neat to do Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. What are you working on right now? Let's see here. I have a couple of different things going. I guess we probably all do. (laughs) (laughs) I, let's see here. I'm working on a, it's called a picket fence by Robin Pickens. She's a designer of um, fabric and patterns. And she has very big motifs and a lot of her fabric. So it's a kind of a layer cake, you know, 10 by 10 type of a quilt where you can really appreciate something that has big print on it. And then the outside, so they're kind of like little garden plots within this realm of a quilt. And then around the edges are white little picket fence all the way around the edge of the quilt. So kind of like the border is a picket fence. Uh So that one's pretty neat. I like that one. Doing a very Coriander Christmas by Cori Yoder. But for the shop, my daughter Kelsey is doing a sew along. It's a block of the month that we're doing at our shop. And so she's doing a sew along and it's Christmas fabric and it's really great Christmas fabric. But we sold out of it. We didn't have enough for me. (laughs) (laughs) But I love the the look of the blocks. So I'm doing it all in red and white. I like the red and white look. So I'm working on that. I also am doing a block of the month from the fat quarter shop. That was a mystery. I had never done one of those before and I was curious how they did it. Mm -hmm. So that's been fun. I think I'm working on month four right now and it's really fun to receive those little kits in the mail. And I, I wanted to be on the receiving end of that to see what it felt like. And I appreciate so much how they put their kits together and the little things that they do and how they communicate with you as a customer and things like that. So that's been a fun experience too. Yeah. Great. I was assuming that you were quilting before you had the shop. Yes, that's correct. So Mm -hmm. can you describe to me how you went from having quilting as a hobby to it becoming a business? Sure. In 2016, my father passed away suddenly. So my mom was all of a sudden a widow, which none of us were expecting or, I mean, I don't know if anyone has ever prepared for something like that, but it was quite a shocker. And it was during that time that my older sister was looking for a way to keep herself more accountable with quilting. And so she decided to join a quilters guild and she invited my mom and my other sister and myself to join her to be a part of that guild. And we thought this would be great to have something for mom to do to join this guild. So we did, and they put on an event called quilters day out where they had a couple of vendors there selling different things. And I, went into one of the booths and just was blown away by their displays, by their kits, by their samples. Everything was so beautiful. And for whatever reason, it just really appealed to me. And I got so excited about it. And my daughter, Kelsey, was there with me and we were both drooling over this (laughs) booth and just got our juices flowing and we were just talking and talking and I came home and I was telling my husband all about it. And I said something silly, like, I just wish I could sew like with a purpose. And he said, well, you know, there's the vacant storefront up at the top of our street. (laughs) And I said, well, what does that have to do with anything? I don't know what you're talking about. He said, you should start a shop. (laughs) I was like, what? Are you kidding me? 
so it just planted the idea, the little seed of an idea. We got to talking and my husband's very entrepreneurial. So he gets these ideas. And then I kind of grew up around my like multi-generational family is very entrepreneurial. So it didn't scare me from that standpoint, but I didn't feel like an expert. I didn't know very much about quilting when it comes to like being really specifically good at something. And I know anything about the industry with fabric and designers or anything like that. But it was around the time we were talking to my mom about possibly moving in with us. And with the shop being the location of possibility being very close to us, it seemed like it would start to make sense for her to have something to do. And she used to be a teacher and is just a teacher by nature. God has put the ability in her to impart wisdom and impart how to do something in such a way that people can just receive it and how great it would be to have a place, just a location where people could come and where she could love on people and give them a skill at the same time. And so that was probably my biggest reason for opening the shop was to have a place for my mom to be able to have a purpose and really impact people's lives. She has a lot of little hidden talents and she would never presume to do anything to like show them off. And so I wanted to be able to have a place where she could go and quietly do her thing where she just teaches people and loves them. And that worked for a long time until COVID hit. And then we had to make some changes. Yeah. That's kind of a little bit of my journey. And my oldest daughter, Kelsey, was, I think she was 19. I think she was out of high school by then. So she wasn't really a part of a lot of the upfront stuff. And she has kind of grown into that over the last couple of years of being interested in working at the shop and helping run it and things like that. I also have more daughters than Kelsey, and they all have some type of role up at the shop. So we really kind of view it as an extension of our household yeah. because we can just walk up there. It's just, you know, a three or four minute walk up the street and we get to practice hospitality around beautiful fabric and figure out what it means to like steward and expand. Yeah, it's been a journey. It's only been two years. So yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely don't feel like very authoritative on a lot of it I feel like we're still learning, but wow, we've learned a lot. From your website and your Facebook page, it looks really good. So you're doing a great job. Oh, great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Share the name of your business and where to find it. It's called Just So, S-E-W. We are located in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, which is basically a suburb of Cincinnati, Ohio. We're just three miles south of the Ohio River, just three miles south of Cincinnati, Ohio. But we're technically in northern Kentucky. And we also have a website called justsostudio.com. That's our website. And we also have an Instagram where we're called Just So, but most of our followers follow us on Facebook. So we have a Facebook page called Just So. And then we have a Facebook group called Just Sew Along, where Kelsey does her sew along for the different block of the months. We are kind of adding on our sew alongs. And I think people do sew alongs differently. Kelsey does hers live one Tuesday a month at the beginning of the month for her coriander Christmas block of the month. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then Facebook, we have a Facebook live show every Wednesday at 1. And that's how a lot of people find us, too, okay. through that. Wow. Now, is there a story with how you came up with the name Just So? Yes, a little bit of one. We were sitting around brainstorming, me and some of my kids and my mom, and I think my husband was there, and we were all just throwing around things like buttons and bows. And, and Kelsey really wanted to say something with bolts, buttons and bolts, maybe. And so we were trying to explain to her that people might think that's like a hardware store, like nuts and bolts. And <laughs> she was like, oh, man. And then I think it was my son who was probably maybe 17 at the time. And he's like, just, you know, just call it something simple. Like just, just, just so. 
So then we had to kind of toss that around a little bit just so, okay. So I guess, I guess that could work. So then it just kind of grew on us and that's how we came up with the name. <laughs> how fun. Yeah. Well, let's wrap up here with, do you have a tip? Yes. I happen to know that there's a good amount of division among quilters about which way to iron your seams. <laughs> 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 many different opinions and all that stuff. And I have been very privileged to be able to learn from some people down at Moda because we got to go on a little field trip for shop owners, oh, a cool. retreat down there, which was really awesome. Yeah. So it helped me understand why people do this way or that way or open. And one thing I just really took away from there was the idea of nesting your seams versus having them open and then popping your seams. I really like nesting them to make my corners match. It just seems to work a lot better for me. So where you have one seam ironed one way and then the other seam is ironed the opposite way and then you can just nest them up together. And that way, when you make your seam and open it up, your corners are matching real nice. Mm -hmm. So that's one tip I really like is nesting your seams. Not right. that that's a new tip. I mean, lots and lots of people do that, <laughs> but that's one of my favorites. That's a great tip. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate having you on A Quilter's Life today. Thank you for having me. It's been really fun. Thanks All again. right. Thanks so much. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. I'm so glad you joined me for this episode of A Quilter's Life. You can find more stories on aquilterslife.com or subscribe on your favorite podcast player so each episode will be downloaded automatically. If you're enjoying this podcast, would you consider leaving a review as it helps others to find the show? Also, I want to hear about you and your wonderful quilts. Please contact me, Paula Chamberlain, through the website or a Quilters Life Facebook group to set up an interview. And as always, thanks for listening.